there and welcome to a new Plugin Guru Quickie video. My name is John Skippy Limcool and this is Quickie video number 10. And number 10 is going to be taking a look at the power pack I created for Native Instruments Absinthe 5. And we'll be looking at some tricks and features and things you can do uh, that you might not be familiar with as we go through 15 of the 128 patches that come with this power pack. Um, I'm also going to show for the second half of this uh, some of the 20 patches that are the effect patches because that actually gets me almost more excited than the synth patches, which are really, I'm, I love the synth patches because I spent the last three months making them, or more actually, now that we think about the time that we spent, it's kind of scary. Um, but we'll take a look at these patches and show you some things and then show you the effect things. Um, if you don't have, there's a demo of this, you can go to my website, PluginGuru.com. You can go under sounds to Absinthe 5. And uh, by the way, there's sounds for FM8, Massive, Stas RMX, and Drum Loops. So make sure you come to my site and check them out. The uh, power pack for Absinthe, on this page, there's demo sequences. The first three are songs that are using more than one uh, Absinthe 5 plugin, some using, I think, up to eight or nine Absinthe. And then down here is a demo bank of patches you can download so that you can try out these patches for yourself. Uh, to see how they work and what we've done and hopefully you will be impressed and want to get more so you'll want to get the power pack the concept behind this power pack is uh, Absinthe 5 is a plugin that I love and I've loved since it came out 10 years ago and uh, it's it's really got a unique characters to it but the factory voicing currently is kind of out there in spaceland a little bit more than it should be there's not a lot of stuff there if you're trying to do any kind of dance music or any modern music production, let's say. There, there's not like cool basses and there's not cool synth parts for the most part. There's a few in there, but it's you got to really dig through everything that's there. So this power pack has lots of cool, exciting patches that have all sorts of cool, unique character. And on top of that, we spent a lot of time, I should say, I, don't, I keep saying we, it's me. I spent a lot of time on the controller page assigning things so that these patches can go beyond just what they are when you call them up. And you'll see that when we go through these patches. So let's get started. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is uh, a bass patch. We'll start with basses because there's not a lot of great basses in the factory voicing. Uh, pointed pop is a cool bass sound. But what's even more exciting is, and this is where you should go with all the patches, is go to the performance, to the controllers page. And on this page, just by moving two sliders, I can totally transform this from three sliders, let's try that. Then you add a cool groove to this, which we can easily do because we got to have a groove. So one thing I want to show you with this, it's cool. Back to the original. I have a slider just for the third oscillator. And if you go over here to the third oscillator, one thing I want to point out is the unison mode of Absinthe is really cool. Uh, it can do up to eight voices of polyphony, and the transpose is for giving you slight bit of a uh, slight bit of detuning, or it can go radical and. <laughs> The, the next video I'm going to do after this one uh, will be doing uh, from initialized uh, analog type patches. So we'll be making things where we show you uh, some of the capabilities and how to set up Absinthe to do killer analog synth type things. All right, we're going to go from here to a BPM base. This is called Now What Do I Do? And with this, it's a huge sub and some rhythmic stuff. And if you look over here on this page, you can see that this C is the bass. 
I'm gonna use my sliders. So let's go to the perform page so you can see what we're doing. If you wanted to take this and make it your own, it'd be really easy to go to the envelope page. Let's zoom in. I was zoomed out a long ways. Go to B. Here's the amp. Where it... If you set it to lock and grid, set it to maybe 16th notes. What I'm doing, just so I can explain, in between each segment is a little dot. This is to control the curvature of that segment. And if I right click anywhere, it's going to add an additional segment so that I can just keep growing this rhythmic thing to be whatever I want it to be. And as I as I do this, I can zoom in and out. There's a little line you can see going across that shows you where you are. Go to the patch page and now if I wanted to totally mess it up, I could go to this really cool parameter called transform, generate AR pulse. And whenever I do this, I, I will show this more in the next video, but uh, take the number of beats up really high so you have an area over here where you can see your, your slope, how it's going to look. Because I'll tell you a little bit about how it's going to sound. And then you can bring it back when you're done. This is a cool shortcut because I don't like not being able to see the waveform and you, you can't move this window. It's stuck there. So make your number of beats long. Until you get it set how you want it. can make it short like let's say four and now you can go in and you can mess this up set your grid to a higher resolution 30 second notes and now you can Now if I want this noise, right now it's not following pitch on the keyboard. If I go over here to, right now this filter is set to Hertz, you can set it to Transpose. So you can do that kind of stuff quickly and easily. So that's just a couple ideas to show you some of the ways you can transform these patches. In fact, I, I was thinking I might do some more quickie videos where just do this. Call up a patch, say, how could we mess this up? What could we do to make this really cool in a different kind of application? Because this... Well, I'm going to save this. Go save as... Now what do I do? Two. I'm going to release an update to these patches. I've found, I've found some other things that uh, in the controller page. There's one thing that drives me absolutely nuts um, where I assign over here on the assignments. When you assign things, um, its default is 99%. It doesn't default to 100% when you call up something. And there are times where this just drives me absolutely batty because like bringing a volume all the way down, it would take it down to 99% down. Not 100%, so you still hear a little bit of it. So I've been cleaning up stuff like that. There's a lot still to clean up in these patches. So I've done one release already where I included these 20 new effect patches. I'll do one more in a bit, and uh, I'll probably have some more patches to include with it because, well, I just made one that we're going to include with it, so we'll include. So that's cool. 
Now my browser isn't showing me my updated patch list unless I close it and open it. Go like that. So there's two versions of that patch now. So that'll that'll be in a future. And if you already own the Power Pack, I send out an email with a link for you to download the new version. So don't worry, you'll get it. All right, so let's go to Bells really quick. I gotta go faster now because I spent too much time doing that. Uh, this is Angelic Crush. And what's cool with this is on the controls page, there's some parameters to give you some really nice variations. Etherizer has a really cool ability of transposing that effect. And feedback equals the length of it, so you can make it longer. So it's very cool stuff. All right, uh, let's go to some BPM stuff. Anything that says BPM means that it's tempo synced and will follow the tempo of your host sequencer. So there's Pulsation Nirvana, which is a... <laughs> Gotta do it. Oh, I didn't... Ah, Gotta do it. So if you go to perform page, we've got all sorts of parameters. Upbeats are different than the downbeats. So you can mix how much upbeat and how much downbeat you want volume wise. And the filters of Absinthe are just awesome. Capabilities are great. So there's that. Let's go to a completely different part of this. Let's go to unspeakable. This is cool for the... This has my voice in the sample, this patch. Let's go to a drum thing. This is non-conformity. Fun thing with this is that you've got uh, the, the kick and the rhythmic and then the pitchy thing are all three oscillators so that you can have. And the reason I wanted to call this one up is to show you something really unique to Absinthe and that's the notes page. This is the page where you have your parameter for glide or portamento and then you also have this. This is the volume page, and if you need to do key scaling, filter tracking, this is where you do it. And one unique thing about how it works is if you set it like this, I have some notes where it only plays, the oscillator A is gone. Like I could s click and drag like this, and now oscillator A is gone for So I could go to oscillator B, and you'll see it's different and oscillator C. So I can have a mix of when I want certain oscillators to play. That's cool. That kind of power, uh, there's no other plugin I know of that works that way for the tracking on a per note basis and you can turn on keyboard. And 
So I'll show you the note on the keyboard. You... See, they're changing up there while you played new notes. Awesome. Awesome capability. All right, we're going to go to keyboard sounds for a minute. This is a beautiful patch using the etherizer on electric piano. Who says absinthe can't play keyboard pipe type sounds that are nice? So let's go over here to controls and here I... Let's get to some really big lead sounds. This is dub, dub, break my heart. And this is for dubstep guys. And one cool thing here is uh, you have an LFO rate slider. So, and by playing with these three oscillators, you can create all sorts of. The other patch I'm going to show in the lead category is I saw sweetness because these types of lead sounds, this is something you you kind of register and think of when you're thinking of hardware synthesizers. And I haven't heard many virtual instruments pull off one that's got quite this, it's kind of that jazz fusion. Minus the clicking, that's my limited DSP powered computer. Pad. Let's go to Apocalypse now. This is a really cool, huge. Kind of their pad, but more than a pad. And there's some really cool tricks in this one for. Uh, of clarity for <laughs> you need something really confusing another type of pad let's do more for the the mellow uh, covering spirits pretty for the <laughs> solemn tributes nice and dark tried to make the, the pads have a lot of the qualities to the pad sounds I make for um, cork synthesizers. So it's got this really nice, warm, very playable, not long. It's a lot of times people make pad patches where it's the attack's too long so you can't play chords and move. And Got to be able to do that. Uh, go to Pluck. This is kind of cool. A Rain Harp. On the form page, you've got control sound of the noise in the harp, fingernails, even the attack tones. So you to make it expressive something kind of unique you know all right let's go into nightmare stuff here's some special effects patches my nightmare is cool for the uh... this is one of them that has on the MIDI page you've got control over how fast pitch bend works you have it at zero. Um. If you set it at like 500, it takes it a long time. And that's a cool effect. Let's 
synth. Here's a staccato. This is using a, a sample that I created using a, up to tw is actually 20 oscillators of sawtooth waveforms from someplace. I think I even mentioned where it came from. It came from Camel Audio, their Alchemy plugin. I did some patches on that, and it's a wonderful plugin. And I really like it sawtooth. It's got a really, it's got the ability to have a hundred oscillators <laughs> of, of detune on a single oscillator, which makes it a very large, huge sound. Twenty-eight oscillators was all I needed for this. So that's here playing. Um Kind of modeling that virus, kind of, or the Roland had that super saw, kind of that kind of a vibe. And then I've got four note unison on the other two oscillators using uh, saw to square, which is one of the morphing waveforms. So that. And you combine that with that and. sound go crazy type stuff right what's kind of fun also with this is if you take down the sample and just use the two DSP synths uh, we did the hooks up so that you can go to sawtooth or square or anything in between almost done almost done I hope you're liking these patches and oh I gotta show you the effect stuff in a minute too okay so uh, really quickly let's uh, get to the Vox patch is really pretty. They're both pretty. I have two, two, two voice patches. And you hear clicking because this requires a little bit more CPU than my computer can give. You change the vocal quality. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And finally, Eternal Bliss. This is another patch that uses the uh, legato on the pitch bin. So that gives you an idea of some of the patches. Very different than what you get in the factory voicing for Absinthe. So it gives it a completely different personality and makes it ready to rip into some pop music, some dance music, some whatever, hip hop, wherever you're going to go with it, it's it's got some stuff for it. All right, I'm going to take a break to get things set up and then I'll show you the effects as uh, the absinthe effects applied to both drums and to synth parts. So stick around. Okay, so I introduced you first to synth patches that I've created for the Power Pack. And now I'm going to show you some of the effect presets that I made for the Power Pack. They're in a separate folder than the patches called the uh, Absinthe 5 Effects, Volume 1 right here. And there's 20 of them. I think by the time that you get this, there'll probably be more. I'll make um, probably at least up to 32 by the time I release the next update. I got some other ideas I want to include in it. Uh, it's so cool. So here's what I got. Let me show you. I've got uh, Ultra Beat from Logic Pro just playing a simple drum groove. And then we're going to mess with that. So here's the first patch called uh, Drum Tonatronic. Here we go. And there's sliders, of course. Super comb, by the way. Mm -hmm. 
So there's one patch. There's gremlins. All sorts of ideas. So there's drum patches. So there's that side of absinthe for the effects. Then let's turn this on and call this up. This is a little tiny monophonic synthesizer inside of Logic Pro. And I'm going to have it do, let's see, hit bypass first. Hit bypass. Just a simple sawtooth waveform, right? Check out what we can do. <laughs> this is cool, man. I'm gonna use the LFOs for this one. In a minute we show you some envelope stuff, but this is just using the LFOs to do it. Boring, which means Again, it's so now you can do cool pulsing type of things. And with these, you can go to the envelope page. Here's the envelope. You can draw to your heart's content. To change it, make sure you hit lock, make sure you hit grid, and uh, have fun. So you can change these all around to make anything you want for yourself. Um, eighth pulse simple for. Sometimes you don't need everything going crazy, right? Uh, anything panning? Some of the BPM patches from uh, the power pack, I just converted them over to uh, effects. Again, I have to keep showing this. That's what it is. Without absinthe doing its thing. Turn absinthe on. Even pulsation nirvana with it. It's all there to play with. On any audio source you can think of, you can put on it, it will take off and do its thing. Um, EP Rumi Chorus is just very nice. If you go to the effect patches that, here, we, we can do it this way, effects. Oh, wake up. Um, this is the factory effect patches. Okay, now we're working. <laughs> so I was, I was just, playing and I'm showing you some factory effect patches and it crashed my audio system. So <laughs> careful if you go in that folder. But anyway, they're out there. They're like so far out there that I don't know really how useful they are. So I made a point when I made these to make some like the, the magic pad. Oh, I gotta have this over here and then you can. For a lot of stuff, you need just really cool usable stuff. So that's the concept behind both the effects and the patches for the power pack. All right, so I think I'm going to wrap it up. Um, we'll, we'll take a look at making patches from scratch in the next quickie video. And we'll also, in the next one after that, probably look at taking a few of these patches and uh, deconstructing them, pulling them apart 
and uh, looking deeper into the, the envelopes and the things that are cool and unique and showing you how you can morph these even more. So I hope this was helpful to you. And to all you that have bought the power packs, thank you. I appreciate it very much. And uh, we'll see you next time.